Kia ora and welcome to Wātea's Fifth Estate, New Zealand's only multi-platform current affairs programme streaming live on wateanews.com, thedailyblog.co.nz and broadcasting live on Face TV, Sky Channel 83. Uh, yes, we're going out everywhere while well, voting forms are out and you have three weeks to pick a new flag or opt to keep the current one. A $26 million binding referenda, that's how much this vote is costing taxpayers. So is it worth it, given Auckland's housing shortage, our domestic violence uh, issues, our roading problems, unresolved treaty settlements? Is the money better spent elsewhere? Here to discuss the referenda, the flag, and maybe help give you more information to support whatever decision you make, uh, in the studio, my old mate, my former former Labour Party minister, making his big comeback. He's been uh, got me to he, he's been in the doldrums for a couple of years. <laughs> but JT, John Tomahiti is back. On Skype uh, from Palmerston North, uh, the, from the Flag Consideration Panel, Malcolm Mulholland. Kia ora, Malcolm. Uh, and Hello. joining us later on on the line is the RSA uh, National President, BJ Clark, and Labour Party uh, leader, Andrew Little. I want, I want to go to Malcolm first uh, uh, via Skype. And Mal, um, you, you're one of the Flag Panel's official historians. How well was the Silver Fern option and its symbolism to, to everyday New Zealanders explained uh, because they're saying we're hearing the process wasn't good. It was stuffed. You get it. You're getting massacred out there, Mel. Yeah, it'd be fair to say there's a bit of criticism out there about the process that was undertaken. <coughs> um, to be fair to the panel, it was a process that was somewhat prescribed to us. Um, but that being said, I often think, well, what would be a better process? What would be a more democratic way of doing this? And often when you ask that question, uh, people are hard, find that hard to respond to. Uh, in terms of a cost, uh, two-thirds of that is on ensuring everybody has a say through the two referenda. It goes back really into New Zealand Post. So um, this is a world first. People have got to remember that everybody's having their say, and uh, it's really important that everybody just gets out there and votes. What do you make of the process, JT? Yeah, uh, do you feel a tad guilty taking all that money? <laughs> Personally, I mean, from a personal perspective, because oh, I know you're a nice bloke, dear. normally. Is that you, JT? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's come back from the dead, OK? Yeah, yeah it sounds like it. No, <laughs> no, 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 but I mean, you know, you people, what John's saying is a lot of people are saying these guys just did it for the money. Did Malcolm Mulholland do it for the money? Well, I think I'm the only scholar on the panel. Oh, no, actually, I take that back. Hunter Regan's another. But, uh, no, look, it's got nothing to do with the money, I can assure you. And, uh, you know, we're putting in a lot of hard hours, especially during the selection process. I know we all did that. Uh, but it really has nothing to do, for, uh, do yeah, with the yeah, money. Look, don't, don't you think it was a bit of a lottery? Uh, you say the process, uh, any better process, etc. Don't you think it was a bit of a lottery in terms of what the expert panel, you being one of them, uh, uh, de determined was the short list? Then we had the shortlist, and we had to go and vote for a shortlist or, or give a view on the shortlist. Don't you think that was a bit of a, uh, a rort? Well, the reason why we had a shortlist of 40-odd flags was to ensure that there were no legal impediments with the final uh, five that were eventually put up. Uh, so it was really important that we got out there in the public so that anybody could go, hey, if that's my design, then they could contact us and let us know. That was the reason why we went through that process. Okay. Yeah, uh, but, look, hey, 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 Kia ora, Willie. Not too bad, thanks, mate. Yeah, yeah, JT's here. He's trying to make a comeback, but uh, uh, I'm, I'm just quietening him up. Uh, in terms of the, um, in terms of this process, are you, are you guys, are you guys hypocrites, Andrew? Because um, you, you were advocating, advocating change. Labour Party was right behind changing the flag. JT was there. Uh, you know the anthem. You know it was all about sort of us going on our independent route. Is the Labour are the Labour Party hypocrites, uh, Andrew? No, it's been well. It's been party policy since 1972 to have a referendum to change the flag. So having the referendum isn't the issue. Um, it is the way the referendum has been conducted. Mm. So we're, right from the outset, but so John Key says right, he thinks we should change the flag. He sets up the process. He had a cross-party group come together, so MPs from every party. They actually reached a consensus on how the referendum would be conducted, and the consensus was that the first question that would be asked would be, "Do you want to change the flag?" In exactly the same way that in 1993, people were asked, do you want FPP or do you want to change the electoral system? Um, but when they went to Cabinet, John Key and the Cabinet said, no, we're not going to do that, we'll just do it our way. So that was the first sort yeah, of thing. Yeah, JJT's that, um, nodding his head here, he's, he's agreeing with you. So you're saying on the basis that the process 
was wrong, you're voting for the old flag. Well, the thing is that, um, all that aside, now you, now you look at the choice you've got, the alternative flag, the, this new design they've got, um, I don't think, I, I don't like it at all, and I don't think it reflects New Zealand, I don't think it, I don't think it sort of pays homage to uh, the kind of Māori tanga of the nation. Um, and I think if we accept that flag now, regardless of what happens, whether we become a republic or, or whatever, um, we won't change that flag. We'll be stuck with that for 100 years, and I don't want to be stuck with that flag for the next 100 years. So how's Andrew Little voting for the old flag? I'm voting to, I'm voting to retain the, the, um, the existing flag, and and I would my, my thing is too that when, when Queen Elizabeth comes to the end of her reign, that's the time for us to have a conversation about, you know, whether you want to be a republic, whether you want to change anything, and that'll be an opportunity, providing we don't adopt a new flag this time, to then look at a new flag. Okay, so, so, so our constitution. just tell our viewers, our listeners, how would Labour have dealt with um, with this process, right? Given you think there should be a new flag. We, w we would have asked the first question, do you want to change the flag? In the same way that, um, that happened with that electoral process um, referendum back in 1993. You've got to give, you've got to do people the courtesy of asking that question. And see, the thing was, in 1993, 85% of uh, voters said, we want to change the electoral system. So that's your starting point. Then, then, then you know you're going to have a debate about what the system is. Um, whereas, actually, you know, 18 months on from John Key saying, I want to have a, you know, change the flag, two-thirds of people in the polls now are saying, we still don't want to change the flag because people don't feel they've been respected, they don't feel engaged, no one's ever put to them the case for change, any, any of that sort of stuff. Now, that's why it, it stuns me that this far down the track, two-thirds of people are still saying we don't want to change the flag. How come the Prime Minister makes this a binding referenda, but the, uh, the smacking bill was, was a non-binding one, eh, Andrew? That's a good question. I mean, most of the referenda we have aren't, aren't binding. We used to have the ones about, you know, alcohol, you know, state prohibition or, or prohibition and state control and all that sort of stuff. They were always binding. The government's got to decide whether, uh, on any referendum whether it's binding, but referenda under the citizens initiated referendum legislation uh, are not binding, um, but a government can make any referendum binding if it wants to. It decided to make this one binding, obviously. Did you have a personal preference in terms of those flags? Um, no, oh, well, I sort of came out in favour of Red Peak only because I thought of, of all of them. It actually, it actually st 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 started getting close to something that I thought symbolised New Zealand. Um, yeah. I, I remember I was interviewed some years back and I was told if we had to change the flag, what would you have? And I said, well, you've got to do something that reflects a kind of clean green nature. Uh, there's got to be a Māori motif in it. There's got to be you know something that... You know, depict something that actually speaks New Zealand to the rest of the world. I don't think that, that new flag speaks New Zealand at all. Okay, so you'll vote for the old one that reflects the colonial oppression of Māori. Yeah, okay. No, 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 that's what you're voting no, for in no, the no, end. No, no. I don't. No, that's no, that's I, quite the principal put, position, put, put Andrew. Into, well, Put it into perspective, yes. because you know, you know that I think it's time for us. If we genuinely as a country want to stand on our own two feet, yeah. it doesn't start with a flag. It starts with our constitution and, and having our head of state that lives in New Zealand and you know, comes from New Zealand. That's, that's what standing on our own two feet is really about. Hey, thanks very much, Andrew. Thanks very much for your... for your Yeah, kill up. Um, is he, uh, JT, is he... Um, is he being a hypocrite? No, no, no. He's been a politician. <clears throat> I think his view uh, that you vote for the status quo <clears throat> is also a vote against John Key, right? So right, just, right, just straight, right. Straight politics. So that's what I think. I think um, um, John Key's henchmen, like Malcolm Mulholland, sitting over there, <laughs> uh, and all the rest, of them, and all the rest. Of them. No, Malcolm. I know you tried to do a good job, Phil. He's a good man, Mal. Yeah, he, I know, he's but a he's failed before. He, like, he's a rugby. He don't know much about rugby, but he's been a rugby historian. <laughs> You know, and he's a treaty historian, education historian. Yeah, yeah. well, what do you know about flags then? <laughs> he's so, an expert <clears throat> anyway. Now, let's just go back to this, because this is serious yeah. stuff. A a and I reckon the Labour Party are hypocrites. I reckon Andrew Little's a hypocrite. It, w it wouldn't matter yeah. what, and, you yeah, know. You could. So, so he goes, oh, this is about, we want something to reflect New Zealand society, so we'll just vote for the, the flag. That doesn't reflect New Zealand society. No, no, well, the problem is um, who shortlisted what we had just to, to, to have a look at, right? Yeah. Mal, Mal, did you shortlist yep. that? You it did. Was us. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So out of forty, so out of forty, and, and you know, Mal, that's probably where it all went, or uh, uh, but but uh, topsy turvy because 
uh, once you give it to a panel of experts, and I don't, uh, that, that, that's a bit of a heavy label, because uh, I don't necessarily think that you hold yourself out to be one. On um, flats. Uh, well, I'm not a vexillologist, if, if that's what you mean, JT. Yeah. Um, so if you put up flags of the world, I wouldn't be able to tell you which country is which, but I do know the history of our own flag. No, you do. And I think do. the reason why I was selected. But uh, look, just a couple of points that I would make. Um, we're coming really back to this whole blind vote scenario. So Labour are saying that we would actually ask the question first, do you want to change the flag or not? The problem that um, we've found in the past is that people will say, well, what to? So you have to offer an alternative, and I think that's why the government decided to go down the path that they have. But uh, here's the thing also about in terms of a Māori motif. When I look at the silver fern, I don't just see the All Blacks. Yeah. I actually see our own people being reflected within it because our old people used to use it as a homing beacon when they would walk late at That's night right. throughout the bush. And also there's that whakatauki about right. uh, regeneration, which involves the fern. So uh, I think people are getting a little bit hung up on just viewing it as a rugby symbol, if you like. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I actually think it depicts our nation oh, no, no pretty good. Oh, but that is, <clears throat> I mean, is there valid criticism over the process? Because that's where you're getting whacked, uh, uh, Malcolm. Do you, do, you, do, oh, do, you, do you cop some of that criticism, that, that, that the process was um, just wasn't right, it didn't feel right? That's, I mean, I'm hearing that on Talkback, I'm hearing that around yep. our communities. Well, 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 I think, again, to be fair to the panel, we inherited that process. We had actually no say in what the process was, and we... We actually, as a panel, haven't had an opportunity to reflect upon that process to look at things that perhaps we could have done better. I know we will do that eventually. We will get to that point. But the, the thing is, I think we're getting to now, is that people are saying, I don't like the alternative design, but I support change, and therefore I'm not going to vote for it. The key point is that you're not going to get a consensus involving flag change. If I ask you, Willie, what's your ideal flag design, you'll come up with something. If I ask JT, he'll give me something probably different. Vice Andrew Little, same thing. Well, JT, so we have... JT's like Andrew Little. He's no, no, no. I've always, uh, no, I've always backed the silver fern, uh, no doubt. Well, uh, why uh, don't you vote for the new new uh, flag all, then? Because it's a half pie flag. It's half of half of nothing. So, so, so you vote for the flag that oppresses us. I vote for status quo. <laughs> hey, when in doubt, you vote for the rule. <laughs> when in doubt, you vote for the rule that you know, rather than the rule that you dislike. You but, fool. <laughs> Okay, thank JT, you for that. JT, <clears throat> yeah. just take take me through. Let me be your flag counsellor. Yes, yes. He needs help. <laughs> this bloke needs help. What's in terms of that design? Okay. Tell, just, tell us what the old flag means. The new, you know, what does it mean? What does it represent? The old flag? Yeah, the current flag. It, it represents the British Empire. I mean, it's got the Union Jack there in the Canton, the the superior place within the flag, and then it's got the Southern Cross, which in all likelihood probably came from Australia because that's where the British designer was based at the time. And that's okay. I mean, people can still vote for that if they believe that it accurately reflects who we are as a people. Um, then you've got the other side of the debate, of course, who, who favour the silver fern. Um, you've got to also remember it's a stylized silver fern. If we look at the symbol on an all-black jersey, that is not an accurate depiction of a silver fern. If it was, it would go probably right across their chest. Um, and if we look at the maple leaf example, again, anatomically, that is not an accurate description of a maple leaf. So, you know, you, you've kind of got to have a little bit of, uh, I guess, artistic license. That's a half pie flag, mate, uh, because you just, uh, by, your own, by your own admission, by your own admission, uh, the silver fern's half pie. By your own admission, the, the Southern Crosses, and the Southern Cross comes from Australia. And uh, they like to see us all on Christmas Island rather than on the North Island. So, so we've got to we've got to try and work this thing through, Malcolm. Yeah, but 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 JT is actually a sellout, isn't he, Mal? I'm saying well, it in a nice yes, way. But, <laughs> no, but, no, he's um, like he's going to accuse you of being a sellout. But here he is. He talks to. I Nora. didn't take the money. I didn't <laughs> take no money. <laughs> no, he so, talks to Noranga so, Tita Tanga. Mal, Mal, and back. yeah, carry on. Yep. Let's just go back a step in terms of the process, right? So we went out there and we consulted with the public and admittedly it wasn't well attended. We all saw the media. We, yeah. you know, we had a couple of cheers and all the rest of it. Yeah, disgraceful. But that was the point of the process. We were asking people, please feed into us what you would like to see in a flag design. Now, at that point of the debate, everybody was really up in arms over the cost. So they decided uh, as a way of saving money to boycott the process, thinking that it would stop there and then. It was always going to continue on. So... What we constantly heard when we were on the road is, if you're going to change the flag, get rid of a union chap, put a silver fern there, but keep the Southern Cross as a reminder of what we had. Now, the other thing about the Southern Cross that people don't know, the reason why our stars are red and white is because it reflects the colouring of the union jack. So if you're looking for where the British ancestry and heritage is, it's there in the Southern Cross. 
Yeah, that's a very convoluted uh, um, rationale as to why you picked the half pie flag, because <laughs> because <clears throat> it still doesn't get get us across the line from your anti-colonialism and his <laughs> his anti parkia He's he's anti parkia right? We understand that. I, I, I'm not. I'm just trying to get a, a fair dinkum conversation. Well, that's right. Well, your your yeah. mum was a parkia yeah, so right. you can't get. No. You know, we've got to support. Uh, uh, and you know, <laughs> we've found out that you are too. <laughs> and I got a Jewish ancestry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And parkia fucker yeah. papa. So I'm very. You know, we, we're right across the line. Ambidextrous. Ambidextrous. <laughs> that's the word. I knew that was the word. Uh, anyway, um, we're on the line, we've got the um, RSA uh, president. BJ Clark, good to have you here uh, on the line there. Um, BJ, thank you, thanks for joining us. You, 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 you're really disappointed. You're with uh, Willie Jackson and John Tamahiri, uh, BJ. Um, you're really disappointed uh, the pro-change wheeled out a, a bunch of celebrities, aren't you, in terms of Richie McCaw and Dan Carter, in terms of the change, aren't you? I think it's, I think it's disappointing that... Um that the, uh, those proponents for a change of the flag um, are using uh, people to try and um, get the average New Zealand to change their mind, actually. I mean, the RSA's position is all we're asking people to do is, is have a vote. Make whatever you want to do, get out there and vote for whatever flag you want to. You'd be, you'd be interested to know that most Māori uh, support you. Well, I think then, um, you know, Mary always were very intelligent, Willie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I try so, to tell uh, people that. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the fact is they recognise that, um, you know, history is history. Yep. And um, whatever we have, we should never deny our history, whether it's uh, right or wrong. We should fix it, but we should never deny it. And changing a flag will not uh, change our history. I got we, John and I have historian Malcolm Mulholland um, on Skype uh, uh, with us tonight. Now, Malcolm says that you guys are a bit, um, you, you guys have got your history wrong and that, that so many of the, uh, the wars were fought under the British flag. Do you agree with that, BJ? Yeah, I mean, we've, you know, the, the flag history has been very clear. I mean, that's been uh, churned over for, for throughout this whole process. But at the end of the day, this flag that we're talking about is the one that we've uh, had for a long time. Um, and, you know, I mean, I've heard people talk about, well, if we change it this time, that'll last us another 50 years before we change it again. Well, you know, we're just going to keep changing our flag. Um, this, as I say, changing the flag doesn't change the history, which some people seem to think is a good reason to change it. Um, and I, I just don't see that as a reason to change. Do you think it reflects where we are today, though, BJ? You know, we've got... You know, we've got a real strong Māori uh, population. We've got re really, uh, you know, a lot of immigrants here, Asians. Uh, New Zealand's changed from your days, uh, BJ, you know, and I can see you're about 82, just having a look at your uh, photo online. And so, you know, we've got to move on. Oh, actually, no, I'm having another look. No, no, I was about 20, 20 years out, BJ. 20 years younger than you, will you? <laughs> no, but, but, you know, I mean, does it really reflect where we are? Isn't it time to move on from the old fuddy-duddy Tommy Blinken flag from that, that we're under now? No, it's not, Willie, because the, the flag is a flag. Look, I came up to do an uh, interview on Māori television sometime last year, and it was a, uh, a, a chappie, my taxi driver was Indian, and I told him what I was coming to uh, the television studio to discuss, and he said, why do you want to change your flag? And I said, well, what do you think about it? And he said, well, that's the flag of the country that I came to. Why, why do you want to change it? Mm. So, you know, I don't, I don't, see, I don't see a lot of, uh, um, of our ethnic residents racing out well, there to say, well, now that we're here, you need to change your flag. Yeah, well, Winston, um, well, Winston Peters would say uh, the Indian cabbie don't have a say. What do you say to that? Well, I think, um, you know, the... the People that are um, sent a ballot paper, they're the ones that will have their say. Mm. And what we're encouraging them to do is to make sure they use that, uh, that right, that democratic right. We're not asking people to change their minds. All we're doing is saying that voting paper has been sent out to you, open the damn thing, fill it out, send that back in. And I think if we, the greater percentage we have, the better understanding we'll have of the mind of the country. And, and you know, let's go back to the start of this. Why are we going through this process when the, the people of New Zealand weren't asking for it? They're asking for a hell of a lot of other different things, but I've never seen people marching down the street in great numbers 
banners flying and saying change the flag, change the flag. Yeah, but do you, do you accept that if uh, I'm a political leader, and Mr Key is, that p part of your legacy is uh, another uh, rung on the ladder towards self-determination, self-expression, self-identification. Flags are part of that, and uh, changing the flag is part of the discussion on the way to re being, a, being a republic. What, what do you say to that? Well, with respect, maybe that should have been the first discussion. Maybe we should have gone through that process first and then um, looked at whether um, we needed to change the flag down the track. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, this is a... This is a, um, a choice of the nation, and, and we fully support that. We've, you know, our arguments through the process have been well known. Um, you know, a waste of time going through two referendums. Why didn't we just ask this question to start with, etc.? But now we're here. We're saying, look, let's just let people get out there and make up their minds and have their vote. And that's why I just do find it a little disappointing that uh, we're rolling out, uh, you know, people, much respected people. Uh, that, and, and let's face it, um, it is designed to try and change people's minds. Yeah. Do you want New Zealand to be a republic, BJ? No. No, no, you're not, in, you're not into that. 26 million, too much money? Too much money to spend on a, a referendum? Well, that's what, that has always been our point. Yeah. Um, we, we, we think it is uh, our first position was, um, again, why would you spend $26 million when, you know, that's not what people are asking for and we... You know, if we could regurgitate the fact of, you know, what we could have spent it on. But we're here now. We've spent the money. There's still a lot more money being spent. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, at the moment to try and convince people to change the flag. So I just see it as a, a complete waste of money. Hey, you're a good man, BJ. Thanks for joining us tonight. So are you, and thank you very much to all the wise Māori that are going to be voting for the current flag. <laughs> Kia ora. Good on you, BJ. I good, on, good on you, <laughs> BJ. Thank you, mate. There you go, that's BJ. I mean, you know, um, Mal, you, you're not surprised, are you, with the, with the response from the old soldiers? I mean, I was, I was watching one of mine and John's uh, relations there from uh, Raihania, one of the clubbers from Ngāti Pro, and he said that, you know, you, you, people who, who, who vote for the flag can get stuffed and, uh, <laughs> and go to hell. It's a, it's a sin against God. Is that sort of court at all? That sort of talk's been going on now. He's, he's a yeah, service, no, it, yeah. it has, and I'm going to take my hat off to him. At least he's saying, you know, everybody get out there and vote. And I yeah. think that's probably the most important message. So whatever flag we end up with, you know, it's well supported. But what I would say is that in terms of the war argument, um, and it was really refreshing, I've got to say, to hear BJ agree that predominantly the, the flag tended to be the Union Jack, especially in World War One. Uh, but, you know, in terms of which side of the ledge you're on, you've got those who will say, well, that's not the New Zealand flag, um, so they'll advocate for change. And you've got others who will say, but hold on, we're looking to get rid of the Union Jack on the New Zealand flag, so we should retain it. So those are both sides of the argument, if you like. The other thing that I'd just like to say is, in terms of the criticism that the Dan Carters and Richie McCaws have received, um, I'm not hearing a lot of criticism, though, and I'm not advocating for change, but for people like Lizzie Marbley and Paul Henry who want to keep the flag. Um, you know, again, they could be labelled... And John Tomahiri. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Exactly. Look, everyone should have their say. It, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I think, I think you've been a bit disingenuous about um, returned servicemen. Um, we don't have one survivor who fought under the British flag uh, in the First World War. Uh, we have survivors that fought under our fl the present flag in the Second World War. We have them in the Korean War. We have them from the Vietnamese War. We have them from the Iraqi engagements and so on. Mm. So, to, so to suggest that these people's views of the, the flag that sort of garnered their uh, courage to do what they did, I, I, I think is uh, unfair. Uh, and I think from a historical perspective, uh, no longer carries uh, weight because that's all it is. It's a historical thing. These people carry those uh, emotions and those those experiences very dearly. And so, from Uncle yeah. Noel all the way through, I, I, I do think that that's an issue. And I, I, I do think uh, you should um, stand up and apologise. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think it's very good, point <coughs> and I think well done <laughs> because uh, because they didn't. They, a lot of our crow and all that, you know, with respect, and John knows this better than anyone. They didn't mm. go to the war for the flag. Mm. They went to, to war for us. They went yep. for, you know, because mm. our, our mm. tipuna mm. said, you go to war, you know. Yep. You, 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 we've got to prove ourselves as Kiwi, as yep. New Zealanders, mm. John. Mm. Not for the flag, Malcolm. You know this. John knows this. 
Yeah, look, there's several motivations as to why people go to war, and you'd have to go back and ask them uh, yourself. I mean, what tended to happen in my own whānau, if I looked to my own experiences, I had a grandfather World War II, great-grandfather World War One. The war was actually never discussed. It was a taboo subject, if you like, apart from every year they'd go to Anzac Day parades and, and have a couple of jugs, that sort of thing. So if I look at my own experiences, um, that was kind of the, the limited discussion that was had. Yeah, yeah, well, it just goes to show what a uh, deprived background you had. I, I, I think, <laughs> and I'm sorry for you, but uh, others didn't. Look, going on to this flag, I, I, I just want to go back to one thing. And I, how did, how did, what, did you spin a bottle? How did you arrange uh, out of 40 to get to five, you know? And then, hello, all of a sudden, we're now down to uh, the status quo in one. Well, we went through each flag design. I've, I've got to say, one of the things, when we got to that final 40, because we went from 40 to 5, uh, one of the things that had a really big impact on the selection that we did come up with was viewing them in situ. So looking at them from a distance and a dimly lit area, how they were draped, so when the wind wasn't there, when the wind was there, in an Olympic stadium, so on and so forth. And that actually had a big impact. And I appreciate that the public... Uh, weren't privy to that discussion or debate and reflecting back. Um, perhaps that could have been better communicated to the public. Um, but I can tell you, for example, one of the criticisms criticism, sorry, that we received was about the All Black Silver Fern flag not being there. The thing about the All Black Silver Fern is that it's uh, black right around the edging. So that means in a dimly lit area or from a distance, it's really hard to discern where the flag begins and ends. And that was predominantly the reason why it wasn't put in in the top five. Well, why didn't um, you, well, why, why, why didn't you put a border, as the as the Canadians did? We could have, we could have, wow. um, and in fact, I think there were some designs earlier on that did do that, but we didn't feel that that kept, captured the essence of who we are. If I if I just look at the Kiwi, right, a Kiwi, we run into the same issue that the Canadians did 50, 60 years ago with the beaver. If you put a Kiwi up on a flag, overseas audiences think it's a fat chicken. They don't know it's a Kiwi. So these are all the ins and outs. Uh, but, what, well, but, but it's our flag, not their flag, and who cares? Yeah, I, look, I agree. Predominantly, you know, primarily, it's our decision, it's our flag, it's how we see yeah, ourselves. Yeah, but you, you've had enough of our flag, haven't you, Mel? They, you, I mean, don't try and play all neutral no. with us. Yes, no, you no, have. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, no. just, no, 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 no good try. I'm comfortable in whatever flag is okay, chosen. Okay, I get that. But, John, can, you know, the funny thing here, John's sick of our flag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No doubt. Yeah, sick of our flag. Yeah, yeah. Jesus, look at this. Look at this. This is the latest. And yeah, he's going to vote for it again. Yeah, I'm not voting for this plonk. This plonker. <laughs> this plonker over here. No, yeah. Sorry, Malcolm. Could you, we're no, on TV, you know. No, we've got 100,000 people no, watching us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Malcolm, I'm, I'm here because he said he had no talent on tonight, right? Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that. But, um. <laughs> no, but he's, he's, he's that, I mean, this is the sad moment. part of it all. Malcolm, we got... You know, a former minister here, a leader in our community, he doesn't like the flag. No, I don't, but I don't like the one you've bloody <laughs> rammed down my throat to vote for. And so he's voting for the flag. He doesn't, he, yeah. he's voting for the flag. I've got to, I've got to, I've got to vote for the default proposition. Yeah, no, but, he, but it's, a, it's, a, it's a symbol of oppression, isn't it? So, so well, so is the Kane, other one. Kane, <laughs> when, we, when we had our first referenda, which one did you vote for? Pardon? When we had our first referendum, which one did you vote oh, for? None of them were any good. Red so I Pete, Red I, Pete. I, I, I didn't vote for any of them because they're Pete. all rubbish. No, but Willie's put, you're saying Red Pete, right, Willie? Yeah, I am. So at what point of the discussion do we accept that that was a democratic process and decision that was made? No, hey, very good point. Best point tonight, you won the debate against John Tamahiri. Well done, Mal. <laughs> well done, well done. And I want to thank you very, thanks very much for coming on. Um, last word, JT, for you. Thanks, Mal. Republic, are we going towards the Republic very quickly? Yeah, no, I think Mel should be a, a disgrace. He's a disgrace <laughs> to himself, and I, I yeah. accept that. But are we going towards but, the Republic? Yes. Well, we are a Republic now in all but yeah. name. Um, the Governor-General is uh, a titular head at best. The Prime Minister at this stage has all powers. The Executive has all powers. It is a Republic in everything but name. Yeah. So I, I, I just don't get, I just don't, I, I think you've got to understand the Constitution. Okay. Mm. Thank you very much for coming. Hey, there might, oh, might be a future for you. In, uh, in well, I'm not here, mate. <laughs> okay. good, to, good to see you back <laughs> on. Kia ora. <laughs> anyway, thanks, JT. Mm. Thanks, Mel. Flags uh, represent nationalism, patriotism, sacrifice, love and honour. So be careful what you choose. It might send the wrong message. A flag is not just a piece of cloth flapping in the wind. It is a legacy. Be careful what you choose and whose legacy you're fulfilling. Kia ora koutou.